Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a power limit modification that I've done on a Asus RTX 4070 Ti Tough. Uh, I bought this card on eBay, so big thank you to the channel supporters for making that purchase possible. And uh, the reason I got this card on eBay and not from a regular retail store is because it was listed as having some kind of damage that I haven't figured out what's actually wrong with it because it works just... Well, okay, no, there is one weird thing about this card, which is that the little LED for indicating whether or not the power connector is plugged in uh, is permanently lit up. But other than that, the card works great, so I don't really care. <laughs> um... But, uh, yeah, so I got the card off of eBay, and because of the, like, minor damage that it had, I actually got it for roughly the same price as, like, a retail 4070. It was just 600 quid. So, I uh, really lucked out with that, um, because, uh, yeah, normally 4070 Ti's are, like, 800 quid here in the UK. But, and also lucked out in that the 4070 Ti Tough actually is a really nice PCB. Like, if I had a choice of 4070 Ti's, like, this would be pretty high up on the list of cards that I'd be looking at. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, big thank you to everyone who supports the channel, because without you, we, this video wouldn't be possible. Now then, uh, what have I done here? Uh, so there's a switch on this. Now, the reason I've implemented this modification the way I have, because, like, look, if you just wanted to disable the power limit, uh, you could actually just put a wire across that shunt resistor, and you go bye-bye power limit. Um, that works very well on 40 series cards. Um, however, I want to daily this card, so I want the option to turn the stock power limit back on, and that's why we have the switch over here. So what's going on here is that normally the card would have two zero ohm resistors, so there'd be like a zero ohm resistor over here and another zero ohm resistor over here, and what these two resistors are doing is like they connect to the shunt like this, and then they go connect to some extra circuitry over in this area, but ultimately that signal then passes through that circuitry and into this chip over here. This is a US5650. This is a four-channel uh, shunt monitor monitoring chip, so uh, this can monitor up to four different shunt resistors. Um, not that a 4070 Ti will have four shunt resistors, they typically just have three. Uh, you have one for the main, like, yeah, like main power, like main power into the board, then you have one for the memory VRM, and there's another one down by the PCIe slot, which is for PCIe power, uh, like PCIe slot power, but anyway, um, yeah, so these, these resistors over here, basically, uh, I'm actually not sure why they exist, because they are zero ohm resistors, I guess uh, they're an option, like, uh, maybe in some development phase of the card, there was like a, uh, some kind of filtering circuitry over here, um, which doesn't really make a ton of sense because there's like more filtering circuitry right by the US 5650, but I, I guess it, Asus just wanted more layout options when they were uh, developing the card. Either way, two zero-ohm resistors that literally just pass the... Like, one of them basically passes the voltage that's on this side of the shunt resistor over to the US 5650 through another set of resistors, and then this one actually seems to connect just straight into the US 5650. It doesn't even really pass through anything. So, uh, the idea with this modification is very simple. If we make the voltage difference across the shunt look smaller, right, because the, the way shunt resistors work is that you'll have, like, 12 volts on this side, and then if you have 10 amps flowing through the resistor, this is a 0 0.002 ohm uh, shunt resistor, so you'll see, like, a 20 millivolt voltage drop. So on this side, you'll get, like, 11.98 volts. Right, so you'll have this voltage drop across it at, say, 10 amps, and the US5650 will measure that voltage drop and calculate that the card is pulling 10 amps. Um, but, you know, if we just skew this, this side of the measurement a bit, uh, then the US5650 will calculate a lower amount of current, because it, it assumes that the uh, shunt resistor has, two milli has a resistance of 2 milliohms. So... Basically, the idea behind what I've done here is that we want to take some of that, like, un unshunted, like, we want to take the, like, straight 12 volts and feed some of it, not all of it, uh, into the uh, sort of low side of the uh, voltage measurement for the shunt resistor. And so to do that, I've replaced the zero ohm resistor over here. This one got replaced with a jumper because I accidentally desoldered it when I was replacing this one. 
Uh, so yeah, this got replaced with a jumper because I didn't want to, like, you shouldn't have to replace that one. I'm just bad at soldering. Um, originally, I even wanted to do the modification over here. That didn't work out, so we'll not get into it. It's very embarrassing. Um, anyway, so yeah, that, that resistor went missing, so it got replaced with a jumper. Uh, this resistor got replaced with a 56 ohm resistor. So this is just a, a 56 ohm resistor over here. And then this over here is a 39 ohm resistor. And the idea is very simple. Uh, 39 ohm resistor feeds, you know, the voltage before the shunt. Uh, after into like after the the after the 56 ohm resistor. So basically, we just set up a voltage divider between like this resistor over here and this one. And so the voltage that's actually going to the US5650, which is the voltage on this pad right here, which that pad connects to that resistor, um, that then goes to the US5650 and now it's slightly higher. So the US5650 sees less voltage drop across the shunt resistor and reports a lower power consumption, which effectively increases the power limit of the card. And the best part is I can turn this on and off. Um, yeah, that, that was like, this is way, like if I just wanted to disable the power limit, you could just stick a wire across the shunt. That works just fine on 40 series cards. Um, but I did want the option to be able to turn the modification on and off. And so it has to get a bit more elaborate. For whatever reason, I couldn't get it to work. Like originally I wanted to actually like take the uh, low voltage from the, like, output side of the shunt resistor and, like, s use that to skew the high side of the shunt resistor. For whatever reason, I couldn't get that to work. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure why. I think it might be, uh, like, a, a schematics that, like, because the, the thing is, I was trying to do that over here, and I actually don't know exactly how everything over here is wired, because I don't have schematics. Uh, so I spent quite a lot of time, like, poking around the circuitry there, uh, and then, then just kind of gave up and did it by skewing the low side of the measurement, which works much better and is simpler to implement. And I don't know why I never got the high side modification working, but it doesn't really matter. The end result is the same. It's just the approach is a bit different. Um, so yeah, so this uh, gives me the ability to change the reported power consumption on this 4070 Ti uh, on the fly. Because we can actually, like, you can, you can flick the switch while the card is running. Uh, which is pretty fun. So anyway, let's switch over to the card. So as you can see here, uh, we have the card running. I have tested this modification with Furmark. It's terrifying, so we will not be doing that again. Um, actually, maybe we will. But anyway, um, so yeah, you can see 47 ETI. Uh, does it say if it's an Asus card? Yeah, it's an Asus card. Anyway, um, so we're just going to run some Time Spy Extreme, because Time Spy Extreme is like a very heavy, like it's one of the heaviest workloads that I've found that I have on hand on this operating system. And right now we have the car just on the stock power limit, stock everything basically, uh, yeah. Um, and the modification isn't currently turned on. Okay, so now Time Spy is running, and you can see that the card is reporting around 280 watts-ish of power consumption, right? Which is pretty typical power consumption for a 4070 Ti. Also, if we go down here to the performance cap reason, we can see that it's hitting the power limit, which is the whole reason why I've made this modification. Now, admittedly, you can just raise the, the power limit slider to 110%, and then and we start seeing VREL instead of, you know, power all the time. Um, so we start getting a combination of both like power limit and voltage reliability limit, but anyway, uh, we're going to bring this back down to 100 because it really doesn't matter <laughs> what the, the percent limit is set to. Um, and now I'm just going to turn the modification on and you should watch what happens to the board power draw over here. Oh, well, would you look at that? Suddenly, the card thinks it's pulling 120 watts instead of 280. Um, it's it's boosting higher. Um, we no longer see, you know, like power limit as the, the limitation. It's just going to be VREL forever now. Um, 
And the power consumption is slightly higher. The thing that most surprised me about this card when with this modification is that the power consumption actually doesn't really go up that much. Uh, at least not in Time Spy Extreme. In, in Furmark, <laughs> it's a very different story. Furmark is terrifying. Um, but yeah, in, in Time Spy Extreme, the, the core seems to still be bottlenecked by something, so the power consumption doesn't just shoot through the roof. Which is a good thing, because the core does kind of run a bit hot. Right? Like, that hot spot is up at 90 degrees Celsius. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, now the card literally won't ever hit the power limit, because it's reading about, what, like 50% of its usual power limit? Which makes sense if you consider what resistor values I used. I used a 39 and a 56. Actually, if I wanted it to be exactly half, I could have used two 56s. Uh, or if I wanted to skew it even harder, like let's say I wanted to skew it uh, to one tenth, I could have used like a what well, I could have used like a five ohm resistor uh, with the fifty six, and that would have given no, that would be like one eleventh or something like that. But anyway, so I could have skewed it more. I didn't want like an extreme uh, power limit removal on this because I don't actually intend to run this card on LN two. But I do want to do some testing with the card where I would prefer it if it wasn't r occasionally hitting the power limit. Uh, which, even with the power limit slider maxed out, the card was occasionally bouncing off the power limit. So I was like, okay, the power limit's got to go. Uh, and honestly, I could have probably just put a sh wire across the shunt resistor and that would have been so much more convenient. But anyway... Um, yeah, so in times why, you know, we're seeing like 400-ish uh, total system power draw... Uh, 450 occasionally. Like, the thing is, the graphics test 2 actually does load cycle quite significantly. There's, like, some parts that pull quite a bit more power than other parts. But anyway, so, as just time spy. Um, now we're gonna do Furmark, and for Furmark, I'm gonna set the power limit all the way down to 35%, because Furmark is very scary. With no, like, we, well... Yeah, it's very scary when your car, like your 200, like the card normally has a 280 watt power limit. Right now, it has something like a 600 watt power limit, which makes Furmark absolutely terrifying. Because um, the cooler is not designed for 600 watts, and even if it was, the chip is not that big, so the thermal density is kind of sky high. Um, but anyway, so we'll start Furmark on. Uh, you know, 35%, and right off the bat, we're already hitting 365 <laughs> watts at the wall, which is, uh, so, you know, it's like, it's not particular, it's not concerning yet. Um, like, that's less than what we saw in Time Spy, so I'm not too worried about that. But, um, we're just gonna go up to 50%. Yeah, so now we're pulling more power than Time Spy ever did. Gonna go up to 60%. And I dare not go above that, because our hot... Well, you know, maybe just, just a bit. And I'm gonna stop there, because the hot spot is at 100 degrees. Um... Yeah, I, I don't exactly want to uh, find out how quickly you can electro-migrate a, a whatever chip this is. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's a GA-104, isn't it? AD-104. Oh, right, GA was Ampere. So, yeah, I, I don't really want to find, uh, find out, like, at what temperature AD-104, like, starts falling apart. Or at what level of current draw it starts falling apart. So, we're not going to be running for Mark. I don't think I would blow up the VRM on this card. That That's a, another real concern with Fermark with no power limit on a lot of uh, GPUs, is like Fermark with no power limit destroys VRMs. Actually, on some cards, even with a power limit, Fermark will destroy the VRM, but um, that's a bit rarer. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, so that's, that's Fermark with, like... Like, we never actually went to 100% on the slider, so... Yeah, I, I'd, like, I don't really want to go there. Uh, the card is still just on an air cooler, so, yeah. Um, and honestly, even if I had it on water cooling, I'm not entirely certain that I'd want to find out what happens at 100% power limit with this modification turned on. So we're going to turn it off again, and I'll just show you what Furmark is. 
normally supposed to look like. Also, consider the fact that, like, while it was running, like, it was running for a mark at almost, you know, at like 2745. Um, so very high core clocks. Anyway, I'll, I'll flick the switch now. Okay, so power limit is re-enabled. And we're just going to start Furmark. And so right now you can see that our power, power draw is like 180 watts, and we're at like 300 watts on the wall power reading. And if I reset the, the card, you can see it maxes out at 420 watts again. So... Yeah, so the thing that's interesting about this modification, also you'll notice that we're not hitting quite as high clocks as with the power modification, but that, that makes sense, right? Um, also, our hotspot temperatures aren't anywhere near as high because the card is actually hitting the power limit instead of not hitting it. Well, actually, it was still hitting it. It was just much higher than usual, right? Um, but... Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the interesting thing for me with, with this modification is like it really doesn't make much of a difference in something like Time Spy Extreme or Fire Strike or like your typical 3D workloads. It really doesn't affect the card's power consumption in those very much. But Furmark uh, absolutely skyrockets in terms of how much power it can pull. Um, which makes sense, because Furmark is... Like, the, the funny thing with, with GPUs is that under most circumstances, they're never really going to hit 100% utilization. As in, not every single transistor on the card is actually going to be at 100% load, right? Like, inside the chip. They're not all going to be fully utilized. Uh, Furmark is as close to 100% utilization as you can generally get, which is why it also pulls just insane amounts of power, uh, especially when you disable the power limit, which is why, like, so in, like, Time Spy, you eventually sort of hit, like, a, a utilization bottleneck where it's just, like, the, the benchmark itself is just not efficient enough at using the, the core. Um, probably memory-related, right? Because uh, that, that tends to be a bottleneck for, for most types of processing. Uh, but Furmark uh, is designed to not hit bottlenecks like that. So, um, yeah, it, it can pull just insane amounts of power uh, if you disable the power limit. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's like a overly elaborate uh, power limit modification for the 40 series. And, and the reason I say overly elaborate is because, like, literally, if you just wanted to remove the power limit and you didn't care about being able to turn it off, like, turn the modification on and off, you could put a wire across that shunt resistor. Um, and it will work just fine. Uh, the downside to putting a random wire across the shunt resistor is you won't know how much the power limit changed, uh, so you'll have no idea what your actual power limit is. But it'll be very high, so... <laughs> depends what exactly... Like, if you're just doing, like, LN2 overclocking, it's perfectly viable to just throw a wire across it. Um... But if you're, you know, like, if, if you actually, well, I mean, in my case, I could have arguably just removed this resistor and just run a wire straight to that switch. Um, and then, then I'd also basically have the same effect as, you know, putting a wire across the resi resistor. Um, so, um, but that, then we wouldn't be able to see, like, because what happens right now when I flick the switch, right, is we saw in Time Spy Extreme we go from, like, 280 watts to reporting, like, 120-ish. Well, if I replace that resistor with just wire, um, it'll report, like, 5 watts or something. It'll report zero. Like, it, it won't report a very large amount of power consumption whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, I'd prefer, like, so I don't really want that because while i'm not like th like this res this resistor is actually a reasonably like high precision resistor uh this one isn't <laughs> i don't know what exact resistance it has i think this one's also relatively temperature stable this one definitely isn't uh i know that because i've i've no like i've seen these change quite significantly um with temperature but i don't really care that much i like so yeah um Anyway, hopefully this is somewhat interesting. Um, but yeah, so 4070 Ti's, 
They aren't actually very power limited under normal operating circumstances, and they are very power limited in Furmark. So, yeah. And also, if you wanted a power limit modification that you can switch on and off, uh, this is how you do it. Um, and if you just want a power limit disable that you need, a, like, that you can't, you know, like, you need a soldering iron to undo it again, then, then you can literally just put a wire across the shunt. That works just fine. So, yeah, anyway, uh, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, uh, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up uh, shirts, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I've also got a Bandcamp. There's a link to that down in the description below as well. I recently released a new album. So, yeah, it would be much appreciated if you'd check that out. And uh, that's it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.